Hello, Serious Survivor here, and today we're going to look at a quiz about some nuclear fallout and nuclear reaction questions. This is some information that we had talked a lot about in some of the nuclear war, nuclear survival videos that I had been producing on the channel lately. And a lot of this information is spoken of in great detail in some of those videos, but we're going to look at an overview here and hopefully answer some questions. And remember, for more detail on all of these, make sure to check out the links in the description to all of the nuclear war videos in this entire series. Number one, what are the two types of nuclear weapons? Conventional and advanced, hydroelectric and solar, fusion and fission, kinetic and static. Fusion and fission. The two types of reactions that are used in detonating nuclear weapons are fusion reactions and fission reactions. Fusion reactions are the result of combining or compressing two atoms into one, basically, while fission reactions are the splitting of an atomic nucleus. For the more advanced fusion reactions, it takes a fission reaction to actually initiate this process and attain the unimaginable temperatures that are necessary to complete the process. What type of radiation has the most energy and is the most difficult to guard against? Alpha, beta, or gamma? Gamma radiation is by far the most difficult to guard against and it is the most damaging when it comes into contact with human tissue and other organics. The best defense against gamma radiation is early detection and distance. Of the three types of nuclear radiation, alpha, beta and gamma. Gamma is by far the longest lasting, most dangerous, and the most penetrable. This can reach places that the other two types of radiation cannot. And remember with all types of radiation, the damage is irreversible. There is no antidote. How thick should concrete be in a fallout shelter to block the gamma radiation? 10 feet, 13 inches or more, 48 inches or more, or one-fourth of a mile. 13 inches or more. It takes at least 13 inches of solid concrete to adequately block the gamma radiation produced in some of the most powerful weapons that would be detonated on the face of the Earth. To add another layer of confidence, remember to use lead shielding along with the 13 inches of concrete. The number 13 inches is based off of the average size nuclear yield of countries other than the United States. What type of nuclear radiation is the easiest to guard against? Alpha, beta, gamma. And that would be alpha radiation. Alpha radiation, although the most easiest to guard against, is also some of the most energetic nuclear radiation that we can run across. The difficulty with alpha is that most radiation detectors do not detect alpha because of its short-lived state. So this makes it particularly dangerous if it does contaminate food and water supplies. It could easily be taken into the body without realizing they're contaminated and then when the alpha particles are within the body internally they can do extensive amount of damage. What items or materials are effective in blocking alpha radiation? Long sleeve shirt, skin, denim jeans, or all of the above? All of the items listed above are quite effective at blocking alpha radiation. That means our normal contamination suits or radiation suits do an adequate job of blocking this alpha radiation. Once again, the difficulty with this is that it is not detected by most detectors which means things like food and other sources of sustenance, water. This could be extremely dangerous to humans and animals if taken internally before the proper testing has taken place. At 10 seconds, the fireball from a one megaton nuclear weapon reaches its maximum size. How far does this fireball reach? Three miles, half mile, one mile, or 500 yards. At 10 seconds, the fireball 
from a one megaton blast will reach approximately one mile and under optimum conditions even further. And this would be the most devastating range or the most devastating area that one can be within. A one megaton weapon creates a firestorm covering how far around ground zero? 2,000 square miles, 500, 200, or 100 square miles. 100 square miles. The fireball from this size of a weapon would create a firestorm 100 square miles and this is a devastating event although it is somewhat survivable, not very likely, but, but firestorms do only occur under favorable or certain conditions. If a nuclear detonation occurs and it does produce a mushroom cloud, would nuclear fallout be essentially guaranteed to occur? Only if it rains? Yes, no, or if you're near a water source? The answer is yes, because when we see this stereotypical mushroom cloud forming in the air above ground zero or above the point of detonation, then the mushroom cloud itself is actually debris that was evaporated and simply thrust up into the atmosphere from the force of the explosion on the ground. So everything we see in the mushroom cloud is radioactive fallout and will make its way down to the surface of the earth, therefore irradiating or contaminating this surface for an extremely long range for an extremely long period of time. Which type of nuclear blast or burst would produce the largest amount of radioactive fallout? An air burst, outer space burst, surface burst, or high altitude burst. Although some of the other types of bursts such as air burst will produce an explosion of an immense radius and destroy a much larger range of the area, it's the surface burst that actually detonates at ground zero or very close to the ground which evaporates and disperses byproducts and evaporated elements that were present on the ground at the time of the explosion. This results in these very small particles being thrust high into the atmosphere. And as they're thrust high into the atmosphere, then at some point in time, gravity will do its job and pull these particles back down to the Earth. So a surface burst will produce an immeasurable amount of fallout much larger than any of the other types of bursts possibly even combined. So when we see the telltale mushroom cloud in the air, then we know that that area below the mushroom cloud may very well be off limits for an extremely long period of time. Well, that was just a few short questions that came directly from some of the nuclear war, nuclear fallout videos. Hope to have a few more of these quiz videos just for some informational purposes and for a little fun for those who like to answer the questions like this. If you have any questions about the questions as far as like what I meant by the way I worded the question or some things that you are curious about maybe I didn't get into and we could talk a little more about, then make sure to leave it in the comments below. And I hope you found the video informative and the Nuclear War series informative. We will still be expanding on this series, but we're going to also be expanding upon defense. Defense is something we're going to be moving very heavily and quickly into because it's an extremely important aspect of all types of survival. So uh, I want to say thanks a lot for watching. Hope the video was informative. And for now, Sears Survivor, out.